back in the scale garage, looking at hot rods. I uh, made a little bit of progress on the number three last night. Uh, if, if you've watched long, you know I'm not real enthusiastic about that build. I, I spend more time thinking about how I should have made the frame rather than how the frame came out. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start making a chassis for this other body. While it's fresh on my mind, all the things that I did wrong with the number three. Um, going back to more of the way the number two was, this is the uh, cardboard template I used for the number two build. Um, if you remember in that build, I made the step in the back way too high. So we will be taking that down, obviously, to fit underneath this body. But I'm happy with the way the front worked, with just the section together like that. And I think the length on the front will be fine. Uh, I'm just going to have to do some playing around with the rear section. And uh, you see I've got a big piece of steel here. And I'm going to do some things different with this. I'm going to do it the same way I did with the solid square tubing. This is uh, half inch by four foot. That's half inch square. And this is what I've used on my two and three builds. And that way I get two mirror images when I cut it in half. Once I, I cut the notch and weld, I'll weld it together, and then I'll cut the frame rails in half completely. Now the issue I had with the number three was the step I made in the front. Let me grab the template for that one. The idea I had for the front suspension, I needed more of a lift in the front, and that made uh, some new issues that I hadn't foreseen as far as stability. These joints here being further apart, they were weak, and it, it didn't want to stay, stay straight. So that's why in the last video I went back to welding and brazing cross members in as opposed to my bolt-in cross members uh, using the RC four-wheel drive links and uh, because it, it needs the extra rigidity. So that this build uh, I'm going to take that into consideration and I'm going to try to weld the entire frame and cross members and make sure it's all nice and square before we start hanging any suspension on it. Um, it's just the next logical pro step in the in the progression, you know. I'm learning more as I do this every time, and I've watched so many videos on, on building chassis for real cars, and you know, just in that mindset, it's just RC, it'll be okay. Well, I'm getting detailed enough now that I'm running into the same problems that you would with a real one, so it's time to take the real steps to start overcoming those issues in the scale world as well. So I'm going to take this template. I'm not going to hack it up because I like to hang on to it but I'm gonna make a similar one I'm gonna start looking at the rear and how I can fit the rear suspension underneath this body and how it's all gonna work out um, if you're not familiar there is a video about this body I did get this printed at Shapeways um, so there's a link somewhere I don't know where uh, this was sent in to me by a viewer and uh, his name was uh, Ferguson hope I'm getting that right he is a, a 3D designer and uh, a model builder, and uh, he, he liked how I was incorporating RC into kind of a model type build, and uh, he gave me that file, and uh, it is available through Shapeways. He does have a store. It is expensive. I think that was 170 bucks to have that printed at Shapeways, but as you've seen in my comparison videos and stuff, the Shapeways printing quality is, is top notch, and uh, if you're looking for a good print that's the place to get it printed at in my opinion um anyway that being said i'm gonna go ahead and start trying to get an idea of what i want this chassis to look like i got some cutting up some ideas here i uh kept the front basically the same uh, we can adjust the length once we figure out axles and all that mess later um that's one thing i'm, I'm thinking about changing on this and i'm, I'm kind of tired of these semi-truck axles they're just not quite wide enough so I'm, I'm thinking I may have to try to make my own. Um, if you haven't checked out Cyanide Tube, uh, his channel, he builds pretty much his entire hot rod from scratch. All welded and nice and awesome. And uh, <laughs> he's uh, in, we, we've been kind of bouncing ideas back and forth for a while. And he's uh, inspired me to try to go a little further with these builds than I have been. And uh, yeah, so thinking about that for the front end, but we, we can adjust that later. But I was looking at the back, I wanted to do something different. The uh, 90 degree angles just weren't very sturdy. And uh, so I'm thinking, I've got this roughly to 45. And I'm thinking 
I'm not going to do anything off the back just yet because I want to wait and see how high this sits up in the body. And I may, I really don't need metal back there with this sloped trunk on this body. I don't really, it's not like the pickup where you need rails that come back to, you know, mount a bed and stuff like that off of. So really you only need a place to mount suspension links, four link, or at the top of the back you could do a leaf spring or something like that. But I don't know what this build has in store yet. I'm just working on my, my chassis engineering techniques right now, so. Uh, I'm not even sure if there's a timeline for this build that may not get touched again for a while. We might pick back up on number three, but I don't know. I'm just speculating, running my mouth. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and weld these things together in this configuration, and then I'm going to start looking at, at bracing. Once I have that all as a whole, then I can start looking at how I'm going to cut it better because uh, I can't use the bandsaw. I tried that with the number three, and it just will not cut evenly. It tries to walk from side to side and you end up getting one side a little thicker than the other and it's just too hard to cut that small of metal with the bandsaw. Um, my saw is all just too violent. It's not going to give me a clean cut. I won't be able to keep that straight. Uh, typically with the number two I use the Dremel and it is a mess and it takes forever and I've just burned through Dremel cutoff wheels but um, that's about the best way to get a, a nice even cut all the way down the middle. But uh, We'll cross that bridge here in a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to clamp all this stuff nice and square. I've got some, i got all my vice grips in out from my trunk of my car. <laughs> I keep half my tools in the trunk of my 58 out in the driveway so I don't have to carry them all back and forth. But uh, I'm going to get all this stuff clamped down real good. And I'm going to put it in the vise and I'm going to measure everything different than I've done before. Because uh, number two, it just I got lucky. Number three, I didn't get so lucky, just eyeballing stuff. So this one, I'm gonna try to be more precise, and uh, I'm gonna clamp everything down, get it nice and square, make sure everything jives like it should, and I'm gonna spend a little more time trying to weld it up good with my my crappy stick welder. And just try to get a get good penetration and get even. Um, that was one of the issues I had on the number three is I I thought I had it welded good, and then once I cut it in half, it wasn't quite as good. I had some welds crack. So I had to come back and uh, re-weld, and that's where some of my awkwardness came from on the front end. So we're working hard to try to avoid that this go-round. So let's get this thing clamped down and weld it up. pretty good I uh, <clears throat> put it on pretty thick I really burned into it so I had a lot of excess to grind off as you saw there but um, I'm trying going for quality this time I'm really trying to do things right so um, this is my front section next we're going to worry about the rear step and uh, main thing is this is nice and flat. It doesn't wobble, it doesn't teeter. It's nice and it helps if I show you there. <laughs> it's nice, square, everything is even. So that way when I cut it in half, it'll still be pretty straight. I think another issue I had with the number three when I was cutting it in half, I got it too hot. And as the halves came apart, they started to flare away from each other. Just from the, the heat, the welds were pulling on the outside edges. so. It's another issue with building it like this, trying to uh, get it to, maybe because right now I'm only welding on the outsides, which is fine because it's square tubing, but once it's cut in half and it's a C-channel, all that force is going to pull and it should try to draw the halves away from each other, which we don't want, but we want to keep to a minimum. So uh, I may come back and hit the insides of the joints with a weld as well. Um, it's going to be harder to grind those down because it's up in the up in the little nook and cranny of it, but 
I think that's what needs to happen. I, I want this to be sturdy. I, I want this entire chassis to be welded together. No bolts, no no uh, four link rods, fits cross members. I want it to be a completely squared and built chassis. I'm trying to uh, up my game with this a little bit, so. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at the rear here. I want my joint to be just behind the cowl of the body. So the raised part will stick out and that's where the engine will mount, whatever we choose to build with this later. So I could put my joint on the back side of that or I can put it on the top. <clears throat> now I don't think there's really one benefit of doing it one way or the other, short of how far back it's all going to be. So if I do it like this, that's going to make my step right at the tire well mark on the body, which I need to give myself as much room as possible right there for the rear suspension. <clears> that <throat> if you follow along the number three build, it was kind of a very short three link with a pan hard that I did. <clears throat> I didn't have a whole lot of space back there to do do much. With the number two, it was a truck bed, so I had a, a good, fair amount of room to put a big four link in there and all that. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. So I'm, I'm just kind of flying blind right now. I'm just really working on technique with this. I mean, this, this chassis could turn out to be nothing, but right now it's just uh, practice. I'm trying to, to share with you all how I'm trying to better my, my processes here. So I think for this... It, with the body setting like it is, I need to put that on top of the bottom piece. Um, we can always trim it down if it is too tall, but I really don't think it's going to be. It's going to be close, but <clears throat> I just kind of cut that at the angle I wanted, but I didn't really measure the length, so it can always be changed later. Um, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the final size and dimensions of this chassis before I cut it in half. So that, like with the number two, I had to chop down the back half after the chassis had already been split and bolted together. So that was a very big pain in the butt. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie about it. That was that was bad. And I spent a, a lot of time trying to reweld that and get everything squared away. So again, I'm just trying to do it right the first time. And like old Norm Abram said, measure twice, cut once. me so I got the chassis in the step in the rear comes up just oh about three millimeters from the rear deck lid so it's perfect height I'm um, just kind of getting an idea of how long I want this thing I, it you got to start thinking style at this point like the number two it's that's a long stretch the suicide front end number three wanted everything under the hood so I'm trying to decide where I want to go with this build if I'm going to use this body on this frame, now is the time to look at suspension and uh, wheelbase, get an idea of what kind of front end I want to do. Do I want to do some kind of grill like this? This is the Awesome Designs uh, Farm All Tractor Grill that we came up with. Um, if you're not familiar with that, that's a common rat rod grill shell off old tractor. It's pretty cool. And uh, this is a, it's available through the Shapeway store. It's a really, really nice piece. It uh, all the fins and stuff are, are printed in, and it's it's legit. I'm not sure if it's right for this body though. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking. But I just wanted to throw something out there to kind of get a get an idea of, of wheelbase. Do I want the axle this far out in the front with the grill back at the end of the frame? What kind of engine am I gonna do in this? It's all stuff I've got to try to think about here before. I get to the point of cutting the rail in half because it's going to be easier to trim that front end down 
while it's all is one whole square piece and that's kind of what I'm leaning to I think I want to bring it back at least half an inch if not a whole inch so I'm gonna go ahead and chop that off with the uh, sawzall probably it's the easiest thing I got going right now put a new blade on it and it's chopping right through this like butter so I'm gonna take a little bit off the front end and we'll go from there like I said I still don't have any any concrete plans for this yet I'm just working on my RC engineering methods trying to better the process here so I'm gonna take a quick break and chop that down and we'll see what's next off the front got it ground down a little bit I'm gonna go ahead now and take the time and hit the top sides of this joint and weld them it's gonna be trickier to grind down you saw trying to grind in that was a was a pain and I may also hit the back side of this one as well I want to make sure this is is square and it's not gonna pop apart once I cut it in half I'm really really taking precautions with this one so I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up and weld that mess up too. Alright guys, so uh, I think it's pretty solid now. Um, part of been dreading is cutting this in half. <laughs> so uh, I think that's where we're at. I've got it pretty cleaned up. There's still a few uh, divots in the side where the welds are, but <clears throat> I'm not going to mess with that any further because I don't want to weaken the weld. Because I'm not sure how, I'm not sure how much penetration I'm getting with the stick welder. I mean, it feels solid now, but we'll see how it is once I cut it in half and we can see the other sides of the inside of the tubing, see what the, the penetration looks like. But uh, it's, so far, it's it's way more straight than uh, anything I've done so far. So I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident in it. So I guess I'm going to get this set up on the bench vise and uh, get my respirator on and we'll start dirtying up the room even more. I've got my fan in here going trying to circulate the weld smoke out because kind of this room's kind of small and confined so <clears throat> I gotta keep good airflow and uh, yeah put the respirator on and we'll get to cutting this thing in half.
so got my halves done. They, are, of course, are not perfect cutting with the Dremel like that. Um, I smoothed them down. There's still some imperfections on the inside edge, but it is good enough because they are still straight. The welds are straight. Everything is square like it should be. The lip on the inside is not going to affect any of my further steps, so I'm not worried about the cut in the center being perfect. Um, the only thing I care about is that it's square, and that is what we're going to do next. I, I'm trying to figure out where I want to put cross numbers. So obviously we're going to need something in the front, and it would be wise to have something low here, something in the center here where a transmission would probably mount and something at the back. So we're looking at about four cross members and like I said before I want this frame to be completely square and welded so I am going to uh, find my, my flat stock where I've got it at and I'm gonna cut four pieces exactly the same length and then we'll figure out where to put them. Um, typically on my other builds I've done the rails like this where they angle towards the front to keep a narrower track in the front. This one, I'm going to keep them exactly parallel and uh, that's going to help ease with suspension install. Um, where is it? I'm looking, I think I'm going to stay, this is a Trail Finder 2, it's just a, just a little wide to fit through the firewall on the body. Move these tires out of the way. Just a, just a little bit. So I think I'm going to try to stay close to this because I might want to use like this servo mount cross member or something like that on the build. And I want to be able to use the factory threaded holes on it. So I'm going to uh, keep these rails about that far apart. We can cut the body a little bit to clear the, the chassis at the firewall. I had to do that on the number two. But uh, I'm not looking to go any wider and I'm gonna keep it parallel front to back so that'll help simplify the process later another mistake that I had made on my previous builds trying to because I, I, I think I, I did that because the the number one rat back there was on a bruiser frame and if you're familiar with the to me a bruiser frames they widen at the rear quite a bit so I just carried that tapered effect into my my scratch builds because that's what I'd known, that's what I'd kind of dealt with. But this one, we're going to keep them parallel. And uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and find my, my material here and try to get me four even sections exactly the same length, which is going to be a challenge. So I cut those, they didn't come out very close, so I spent some time uh, grinding them down. Got them pretty, pretty dang even. So now the tricky part is going to be keeping all this square while I weld these together. Um, I haven't exactly figured out how I'm going to do that yet. I don't have a whole lot of big clamps. I really need some, but not sure yet. So I'm going to do some uh, tinkering around here and see if I can't get this stuff all held together. Um, I'm not even sure I can get these apart yet. i got to clean up the edges a little more so the weld will adhere. Get some of that coating off of them, whatever they come with, oiled up from the factory. And uh, hopefully get this stuff mocked up. I can weld through this here pretty quick, but let's have to see. Alright guys, so 
<clears throat> I've spent about an hour trying to get this thing square. <laughs> I've got it clamped in the vise with my cross members in place. And I've measured it and everything is jiving just right. So I'm going to go ahead and start trying to weld it. Hopefully it doesn't shift from the heat. Um, start with the center pieces since they are directly in the clamp of the vise. And um, hopefully this thing comes out nice and uh, square like it's sitting right now. six and a half hours um, my welder kept overheating <laughs> uh, they had some issues with the cross members trying to get them in they everything wanted to shift and tilt so this one and this one are crooked but the frame is still square sets flat everything is jiving like it should um, I'm probably gonna come back because I only had time to do it one way probably going to come back and weld the bottoms as well just to further reinforce it and um, hopefully we don't make it bend it out of shape anymore getting it hot um, I haven't cleaned up the welds on the insides yet just it's late and I'm tired of jacking with it I said I've been out here for quite a few hours but it is pretty sturdy it has uh, very minimal flex and it is, like I said, it's setting flat. There's no wobble to it. And that's what I'm looking at. Okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> we're making progress. Like I said, I'm trying, to, trying not to rush things anymore. I always, I've always had an issue with patience. I always rush things and end up messing it up. So, really gonna take my time this time um, so my little stick welder is overheating so it needs to cool off overnight maybe we can pick back up on this tomorrow and finish reinforcing it and cleaning up the welds that are on there uh, I'm not sure yet like I said those front cross members were they welded in a little crooked just because they kept shifting and I, I had some vice grips holding it but it just wasn't doing the trick so I'm not sure yet if we're gonna take the time to cut those out and uh, redo them. I might, might not. I, I don't know yet. Like I said, just gonna roll with the punches on this one. I've already got a pretty solid base. 